Okay, in this episode of Book of the Beast, we're going to be going over Commandos and Boss Snickrot. The last of the elite entries in the Codex. So let's start with Commandos. Commandos are virtually unchanged. Um, they still have Sluggish Chopper and Stick Bombs. They had Stick Bombs before. They still have Move Through Cover, uh, like they did before. They're still the exact same price. Uh, the Rocket dropped in price like most, like every other Rocket in the book has. The burn has stayed the same price, which is nice, and you can still upgrade to a knob. Uh, they do have the... they did get Stealth. So that's one new rule they got in this new book. Um, so that's kind of nice to have the Stealth rule when they come on. Might have a little bit of better chance of surviving uh, when they come on the board from, from reserves. Get them in some a runes or something for the 3-up cover save or something. It'd be really nice. Um, Still same, take same number of film models, um, so they're virtually unchanged. Of course, they still can't assault out of reserves, just like always. I was really hoping, really hoping they would fix that with Boss Snickrot, but unfortunately, they did not. So, what does Boss Snickrot get you? Well, he still has the ambush rule, which basically says um, if he joins a unit of commandos and no other independent characters join them, then they can be held in reserves and then they come on from any table edge just like before. So that ambush rule is basically unchanged. And also when they come in from reserve, uh, they get uh, shrouded instead of stealth. So they get a, two plus, a plus two cover save uh, when they come in with boss Nickrot. And I think that added level of survivability is a huge, huge benefit to the commandos um, when they come in from reserve to be able to stand around a shooting. And of course with the way that you can score objectives with any unit now, they might actually be useful. Uh, being able to uh, take objectives. So if you're running commandos, you know, run an objective near the table edge. Especially with Snickrot, you know, playing Maelstrom, you can like put the numbers out anywhere and you can come in and, and uh, come from the table edge closest to the objective that you actually have. So that's a really nice benefit. He did go down in points some. He's only 60 points to go in with the commandos. Um, but now the nice thing is that you can have Snickrot and the Power Claw knob at the same time. Uh, which is something you couldn't do in the old book. Because he's just an additional independent character that can that can, attaches to commandos. Um, let's see. Boss Snickrot is an independent character, but he can only join units of commandos. And if you have a unit of commandos, um, he does not take up a force org slot. So, he's kind of like a unit upgrade character, but not. He's still an independent character. Um, he's still got the gifts of Mork and Gork, of the Mork's Teeth, um, where it's uh, AP5, Melee, and Shred, where reroll wounds. It was reroll hits before the old book. I'm not sure, but now it has Shred. And they are two weapons, so they do get plus one attack still. So he still gets Strength 6 on the charge, reroll and wound. And it's now EP5, so that's kind of nice. Um, it's nice that he does have that extra leadership 8. That's really nice. I kind of like that when you put him with the commandos. That extra point in leadership could be quite quite huge. Um, especially combining with the boss pole here on with the knob. Um, he also has fear. So if you have Snickrod in the unit, you, the commandos will actually cause fear. It may not come up very often, but getting a unit down to, to weapon skill one uh, could be very very nice um, so he's got the same stats as before he's still only toughness four with two wounds and a six up save initiative three four base attacks so five base attacks with his you know with his gorks morks teeth and uh, strength five yeah so he had the, basically neither one of these units have changed a whole lot with the exception of adding up the stealth roll can you use commandos? I think commandos have gained a lot of survivability with the adding of stealth and, and or shrouded. Um, so you might actually be able to use them to infiltrate up and actually deploy them at the start of the game into ruins or into a forest somewhere. So they have a lot of uh, a good chance of surviving that first turn. Um, especially if you're going second where you can still assault so infiltrating these up will mean that they'll have to deal with these guys. I'll have to shoot at him, basically, otherwise they're going to run up and charge the first turn. Remember, it's only the first player turn you can't charge if you scout out the first game turn. 
Um, so yeah, they've gone down in points a little bit if you include the Snick Rock, because he's gone down quite a bit. I think it was 85 in the last book, you know, 60. Um, yeah, I said being able to control where he comes in, be nice for scoring objectives, since they can score objectives now, uh, especially with the Maelstrom, and since you know which objective points you're going to need um, prior to these guys coming on the table. So there's a chance, you know, Commandos might see weren't returned to the table. I know I always played Commandos before in, the, in 5th edition, when they could assault from reserves. And they were so good. They were just, I mean, I mean, Commandos with Bosnick Rod was pretty much a no-brainer. You had to take them. Because of the way that it altered the way your opponent had to play the game. I mean, they didn't necessarily do any damage. They just altered the way your opponent had to play the game. Which was, in and of itself, an incredible power. But now, um, and I was really hoping Snickrot would allow him to resolve out of reserves. But I guess they're just not going to break that many game rules. So, are you going to play Commandos now? I don't know if they're going to be, if they're worth the points, to be honest. Uh, you know, for something that's outflanking or coming into score objectives, I think Def Copters would be better. Because um, you can just need to take a one one unit of one def copter, run up, score an objective, and if he dies after that, it doesn't matter. So that's pretty much all I have to say about commandos. I mean, you can try them if you want, try and get those objectives. But I just don't think they have the utility they they once had a couple editions ago, which is too bad. Because commandos are really cool. They have they gain a, they still have a lot of special rules with the with the infiltrate, move through cover, and stealth. They're just the lack of the assault out of reserves just really really hurts these guys a lot because they are still orcs they still only have a six up save so if you come on to the table there's a good chance you're gonna get shot off the table uh, they do have the but the, the snick rot with the gaining any objective and still having the boss pole and the higher leadership it's a good uh, with the knob so it's a good combination there's no doubt about that being able to take snick rot and the knob at the same time but then you know that's even more points because you're looking at a minimum of, you know, 150 points for six guys. I don't know if it's quite worth it. So that's really all i got to say about Commandos. Give them a try. Uh, I think they've really fallen out of favor. They, I know they've fallen out of favor with me, personally. I'd rather spend the points on, on more boys, even though now my orcs are more expensive than Commandos. But Because our shooter boys are 11, Commandos are 10. Uh, the our shooter boys have a lot more utility. So I think boys before toys on these guys would be would be a good um, philosophy to go over. They're okay, I mean, but unfortunately I think they're only okay. They just don't they just, like they just don't have the options to gain the survivability that other orc units have. So that's it for this episode of the Book of the Beast. I'll talk to you guys later.